Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're good. Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast with me, your host, Harry Simi. And on today's show, we're going to be bringing you the latest with regards to Mikel Marino. Yes, I know you're probably sick of hearing the name. I'm sick of talking about him because still uh, on the 15th of August, as we record this at 10.30 in the morning, there's no sign of a deal being in place between Real Sociedad and Arsenal for the transfer of Mikel Marino from uh, San Sebastian across to North London. It's clear that he's a player that we like. We read some reports yesterday suggesting that there are other players um, whose names we're unaware of that Arsenal are considering and are looking at. And that Arsenal are very much in the process of trying to do something, but no real breakthrough has been found. And David Ornstein put out a tweet yesterday um, which I thought was was quite interesting. And I'll, I'll share with you guys uh, why I think that post was was particularly interesting because there's a couple of bits in there that I, I didn't really expect to read. Now, we know um, that Arsenal have been interested in this guy. We know that there's a real want within the fan base, I think, to get this deal done. I think that people are getting frustrated at the moment. They're looking at it and going, the asking price for him isn't completely unreasonable. Okay, He's 28 years old. Okay, he's in the final year of his contract, which weakens Real Sociedad's uh, negotiation position. But this is a move to the Premier League, and we know that Premier League clubs tend to have to pay more, in particular the very big ones like Arsenal. And there's a bit of a frustration on my part, and I've certainly said this over the last few days, that it feels like for the sake of a few million here and a few million there, we're putting ourselves in a position where going into the season, I don't believe that we're completely ready. Now, yes, we've got a much deeper and stronger squad than we've had in recent years. So you could make the case and you could make the argument that, okay, even though we haven't done much in terms of incomings, just the one significant one so far, the signing of Ricardo Calafiori, you can't really include David Raya. He was already at the club. But I think a lot of people feel like there's a real opportunity this season to do something in the window that can consolidate our position as a team ready to take the title away from Manchester City. And midfield for me is a real desperate need. I've talked about this from the very beginning of the window. When we were unsure about Thomas Partey's future, it became even more of an issue. When we weren't sure what was going to happen with Jorginho, we knew uh, that midfield needed some work. But even with those two staying, it's clear that that's an area of the park in which we're short. We are lacking a left eight in terms of profile, a natural left eight. We are lacking that. We are missing that. I'm not saying we're going to play that way every single game or that if we sign Mikel Marino, he's going to start every week. Sometimes it will be Kai Havertz. I'm certain of that. I'm certain that Mikel Arteta will want to give Kai Havertz the opportunity to work with Gabriel Jesus in the same team. I asked him about their relationship just a week or so ago, just over a week ago. And he talked about how impressed he was with the connection that those two have formed and developed. So whoever comes in, in this midfield space, unless it's like a, a world beater, unless it's a Declan Rice type sign-in, is not going to be a guaranteed starter. But there's a need for this type of player, for this profile of player in our squad. I really, really do believe that. I said on yesterday's show, when we were going through Miguel Delaney's report that there's obviously a 10 million euro difference, according to him, with regards to what Arsenal think they should be paying and want to pay and what Real Sociedad are looking for. And I said that if I had to predict how this situation was going to play out, I'd say that there'll be lots of negotiation, lots of back and forth, lots of discussions happening, and that in the end, we'll probably agree at a price point, which is in between what they want and in between what we're at the moment willing to pay. 
David Ornstein uh, at around about 3.30 p.m. yesterday reported that Arsenal are stepping up their efforts to sign uh, Mikel Marino from Real Sociedad. Talks ongoing. Now, why is that bit significant? Well, because for a long, long time, when certain sources have said Arsenal are in talks and in negotiations with Real Sociedad for Mikel Marino, others have denied that. Others have denied that we've got to the point where those formal discussions and conversations are taking place. We heard uh, a few days ago that Edu was out in Spain um, and some people reported that it was nothing to do with the Mikel Marino deal. However, David Ornstein says that Edu has been in Spain this week trying to pursue an agreement. Personal terms, according to him, are no issue. The 28-year-old has obviously given an indication that he's happy with what Arsenal are offering. That won't be a problem at all. Um, but the, the line that really grabbed me from this and the line that I thought was really worth discussing on today's episode was the line where it says, likely needs an exit from Arsenal, whether before or after. So David Ornstein is saying that in order for Arsenal to get Mikel Marino in, they likely need an exit to happen. Now, Arsenal clearly are in a position where they can do this deal before that exit happens. But if they did this deal, it would be with a view to moving somebody on after it in order to kind of offset the funds that were spending on Mikel Marino against. Now, I got so much stick and so much criticism on the pod that I did a few days ago talking about the Eddie and Ketia situation. You wouldn't believe how many DMs I got from people saying, you're a hypocrite. You want Arsenal to be better sellers. You want Arsenal to be... Um, much more feared when it comes to negotiations and much more respected, maybe is a better word, yet you want us to sell Eddie and Ketia on the cheap. I didn't want us to sell Eddie and Ketia on the cheap. I was realistic about what we could get for a player that was our third choice striker that barely played in the second half of last season and who, you know, is on a big contract, which will in turn put clubs off because they will feel like they need to get near that in terms of his salary to make that deal happen and to, to appease him, which obviously is something that not every club can do. So if they're going to have to fork out more on the wages to convince Eddie, then naturally they're going to want to pay less in terms of the transfer fee. I also talked about the market that we were potentially selling to, the French market, Ligue 1. Marseille are not in the same financial position that the Premier League clubs are in. And I said to you guys that if I got uh, an offer from a Premier League club, I'd feel much more comfortable about trying my luck and pushing it in order to try and squeeze as much money out of them as possible and to make that deal as worthwhile as possible. But given that up until now, nobody else has come in and made an offer, an actual bid, and we've read of reports linking Bournemouth, who are said to be uh, opening conversations with Arsenal and Crystal Palace, who are said to have an interest as well. Fine. You know, if one of those comes to the table, then I would be demanding more and I'd be asking for more than I was from Marseille because Premier League to Premier League, that's just the market. That's the way it works. Okay, fine. But when I said that, you know, we probably should have let the Marseille deal go through, when I said that, um, you know, we were potentially doing ourselves out of a sale for the sake of three or four million quid, it was met with so much criticism, people saying, what are you talking about? Arsenal don't need to sell. Arsenal don't need to sell anyone. Arsenal can do everything on their own terms. Arsenal could do everything the way that they want to do it. David Ornstein has just told us that we are likely to need an exit to happen in order for us to complete the Mikel Marino deal. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. The most well-respected journalist on the planet when it comes to Arsenal matters is telling you that we might be able to do the deal before and we might be able to do the deal without selling, but it's likely, that's the word he used, that we're going to need an exit to happen in order for that to all add up. Now, I'm not saying that Arsenal are broke. I'm not saying that Arsenal are cash-strapped. We know that PSR is um, something that's really important at the moment. We've seen a lot of clubs be punished for not following the rules and all the rest of it. And we know that it's something that Arsenal need to adhere to. Yes, Arsenal turned over a lot more revenue last season 
which would have led to, in turn, a lot more profit. But Arsenal have spent a hell of a lot of money over the last four or five seasons building this team for Mikel Arteta that is now at the point where we're almost expecting them to go out and win the Premier League. At some point, that spending was going to slow down. At some point, we needed to start offloading players. And all the work that's been done in the background over the years has put us in a position where we can now get 30 plus million for a Mill Smith row, where we can go into a market and demand 25 ish million for Eddie and Ketia. Okay. And, and the Smith row and the Enketia thing are prime examples of what I've been talking about. Smith row played less football than Eddie and Ketia over the last two seasons. Very, very talented young man. I think in terms of how people view his talent, they would say that he's above Eddie and Ketia. But Eddie and Ketty has been the one that's been available and that's been on the pitch. But the difference between the offer that we got from Marseille and the deal that we did with Fulham is that one was a Premier League club and one was a Ligue 1 club. One was a Premier League club and a London rival. Completely different ball game. Now, Mikel Marino is someone that, as I say, I think in terms of his profile, we could do with. Is it a signing that I'm massively excited about? No, I think it's a smart, shrewd bit of business. And I think for the price that we're talking about, given his experience, given that he is someone that can come in and be a ready-made player, we're not going to have to develop him, hopefully, we're not going to have to do all of that stuff, then okay, I'm willing to pay what they're asking for. 35 million euros works out to about 30 million pounds. We know that Arsenal want to pay something significantly less than that. Well, if you want this player, you're going to have to cough up the money because as the window goes on and we get closer and closer to the end, our desperation and our need becomes greater. Now, some people will counter argue and say, well, Real Sociedad's need becomes greater too because he's going to be out of contract at the end of the season. And then therefore, if they don't get anything in for him this summer, then they stand to get significantly less in January or potentially nothing the following summer. But I just think like we have an opportunity as a football club to do what we need to do to give us a much stronger chance. And listen, we still have a chance of, of winning the league without Mikel Marino. There's no doubt about that. I'm not seeking to discredit what this team have achieved, how they've developed, how they've progressed. Not at all. But the one criticism I had of Arsenal last season, in particular during that first half of the season, was that the lack of a natural left eight profile outside of Declan Rice, because we had to use him at six in the first half of the season, while Thomas Partey was unavailable before the penny dropped with regards to bringing Jorginho into the team. We, we lacked balance. We lacked creativity. Our midfield looked off. And in the second half of the season, thankfully, we were able to rectify it. But the fact that they're after Mikel Marino says that they've identified that as a potential problem that we had last season. They need to make as many gains as possible in order to close that gap on Manchester City. And clearly, a player of this profile is what they think will help us. We could have picked up two more points in the first half of the season had we had a better balance in that midfield. I really do believe that because we were lacking creativity, but we also defensively weren't as solid as we were the season prior in that first half of the season I'm talking about because we didn't have the right players. We were trying to put square pegs in round holes. This is an opportunity to add to your armory something that we've been missing. We're going to negotiate and negotiate and negotiate some more. And as I say, eventually, I think we'll probably end up doing a deal at around about 30 million euros because Mikel Marino is pushing from the other side. We know that they want 35 million euros. We want to pay more like 25. Around about 30 million euros is probably, by my estimations, what this deal will get done at. But the reason I wanted to jump on today and talk about this is not because I'm worried that it's not going to happen. It's not because um, of anything like that. We know that even you know the likes of David Ornstein are now saying that those conversations are ongoing. And more often than not, they do result in a deal being done particularly when it gets to the point where it's out in the public domain. But this idea that we can just ignore good, reasonable offers for our players and that it won't have any knock-on effect and impact 
on what we're doing at this stage in our project, I think is fanciful. You know, people say, well, we're nowhere near breaching PSR. Well, maybe we're not, but why do we have to sail so close to the wind? You know, if Arsenal were sort of in a position where selling wasn't a thing and wasn't a concern and wasn't something that they needed to do, then why wouldn't we have been pushing for this deal much earlier? I get that you want to do it on your terms and I get that you want to you want to pay closer to what you believe is reasonable. But surely when we're talking about some of the amounts that we are, um, you know, that's kind of neither here nor there. If you really believe that the player is going to take you up to another level and get you over the line, then yeah, you do your best to negotiate, but there will come a point where you just have to bite the bullet and do the deal. Okay, Arsenal will pay more for players than other clubs. The biggest Premier League clubs will pay more for players than other clubs on the world stage because that's the way the market works. That's the way things are. The financial superiority of the Premier League has created this environment that we're now trying to do deals in. So it is what it is. You know, I get it. You don't want to be seen to be mugged off. You don't want to be seen to be selling your players on the cheap. I get it. But there has to come a point where you look at it sensibly. And if, as I said yesterday, if we end up selling Enketia for more than we were being offered by Marseille, then in the end, you'd say that's good business. But if it's holding up a deal that we need to do, then was it worth digging your heels in for an extra three, four million quid in order to potentially risk the deal that you think is going to be the one that gets you over the line in the Premier League. And that's the question I would always ask. I'm not one to sit here and criticise Arsenal when it comes to transfer dealings. Over the last few years, I've been very, very satisfied with the work that we've done. Um, but I, I guess the reason I'm a bit defensive today is because I was told that I'm an idiot for saying that, you know, no, we we should be thinking about this pragmatically and we probably should be taking that deal for Eddie Nketiah. I was told I was an idiot when I said that we might need to sell in order to do more business, to do further business in this window. We've got Enketia, whose future's up in the air. We've got Aaron Ramsdale, whose future's up in the air. Two players that you could bring in decent money for. But with two weeks to go in the window, we're no closer, really, to securing exits for either of those two players. And the fact that we then haven't gone on after the Califuri signing to do further business, it indicates that we might need to sell. I'm not saying I know for sure, but we might need to. And when David Ornstein comes out and says, likely needs an exit from Arsenal for this deal to be done, whether that's before or after, but you know they need it to happen because they need that money to come in the other way. That kind of backs up my point. It backs up my point. The point that at some point, the spending was going to slow down. It couldn't just be spend, 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 spend forever. It was going to need to slow down. We've done a lot of work behind the scenes to tie people down on contracts and all the rest of it in order to get to a position where we could sell. But now having devalued the likes of Eddie and Ketia by relegating him down to third choice forward, and that's fine. It was the right thing to do from a footballing perspective. But to pretend that it doesn't have an impact on you from a financial point of view is mad. Why are we pretending? Why are we pretending that Eddie and Ketia's value is the same as it was a season and a half ago? It's not because he went from being your second choice striker to your third and playing far less football. So of course his value decreases. Plus his contract was getting shorter. It's always getting shorter every passing day. So the idea that, um, you know, we don't need to sell if we want to, we can go and pull the trigger on any deal that we want and that we're just trying to do things on our terms rather than there being either A, a need or B, a strategy that they're not willing to move away from is fanciful in my opinion. I hope we get Marino because I think that's the profile of player that we need. I'm not dead set on him. If someone else's name was to come up, I'd be open to that as well. But I just, I just think like the season's kicking off on Saturday. And I think we've really seen over the last two years the value of getting players in nice and early and bedding them in and being ready to go at the start of the campaign. And it feels like with so many things up in the air with regards to incomings and outgoings, going into the season, 
It feels like we haven't executed whatever our plan was as well as we might have and perhaps as well as we have in previous years. But let me know your thoughts. Do Arsenal need to sell, in your opinion, to get the Mikel Marino deal done? Does David Ornstein's line there and do his comments make it clear that either A, Arsenal have a financial need or B, it's based on a strategy that they have in place that they're not willing to veer away from? Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for tuning in. Of course, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new as well. It really, really does help. And I will see you all on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye.